Now, this photograph was taken in the summer of 1939. We were playing Othello. That's me, in the front row, right next to the man that put up the money. Stirring times. Mrs. Desdemona, she's in the Wrens now. Cassio, Amelia, and Bianca in the corner there. And the smaller parts, and behind them the students who just walk on. At the back are stage hands, electricians, carpenters, property men, fly men, everyone. Even the dressers. You see this half head? I take a magnifying glass, you'll see him better. This is my dresser, Fred. He was not what I'd call a good dresser. Time to get ready. Dressing gown, Fred. Yes, sir. But he always answered, yes, sir. He was willing enough, but totally lacking in practical ability. Inside out, you'll never make a dresser, my boy. Wrong way round. Hang up the coat. Yes, sir. There it goes. Looking at him, you'd think he'd done everything marvelously. Tack this up, will you? Yes, sir. Just chasing his tail. No, not there, Fred. The other side. Yes, sir. A minor earthquake amongst my bottles and jars. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> but I wonder what will happen now. Come down, Fred. Yes, sir. Place the boot. I could murder him if he wasn't so obviously trying his best. And when I asked him if his thumb was hurting him, he replied, as usual, Yes, sir. Oh, I remember that day very well. A matinee, a Saturday in September. Fred was always in a hurry to get away after the show, but that day he was off like a rocket. Papers were full of the Nazi invasion of Poland. Ministers hurried to number 10. Bianca came to see me. The news had upset her. Should she still go to the south of France for her holiday? Should she keep her French money or should she... Well, I forget what I answered her, but I'm afraid it was something rather rude. For an actor, there's only one thing worse than a crowded stage door. That's a stage door at which nobody's waiting. I signed some books and then I heard Fred's voice saying, Excuse me, can I have your autograph, sir? I thought he was pulling my leg. What's the joke, Fred? I said. It's no joke, sir. It's from my young lady. She was standing a little way off. A nice girl, too. About 19. Perfectly charming. For the first time, I realized that Fred had got something. When I came into the theatre on the Monday night, Fred, perched on a ladder, was fixing the blackout. Hello, Governor. <laughs> We're safe for the duration, sir. He showed me how it worked. Pull to the left, it showed light on the right. Pull to the right, it showed light on the left. Pulled with both hands, it blacked out Fred. I told him to fetch the stage carpenter. What a difference. He seemed to spit the tax into place. The job was done in five minutes, for the duration. We both admired his performance. Are you taking notes, Fred, I said? Uh, yes, sir. No chair and beginner, sir. What is the matter, Fred? Oh, nothing, sir. Or anything wrong? Well, yes, sir. It's this. I want to join up, sir. I don't know which service to join. Take a pin and close your eyes. Oh, it's not that, sir. I want to join a service I'm best suited for. Well, what are you best suited for? That's my difficulty, sir. Well, what's the difference? Fond of flying? No, sir. I've never flown yet. And you like the sea? Oh, I like the sea, sir. I get awfully sick. Good then, that leaves the army. Yes, sir. But you see, sir, 
Whatever I join up for, I wouldn't like to be just an ordinary man in the ranks. You know what I mean, sir? Just a man with a rifle, marching with 10,000 others, or a sailor, scrubbing the decks, or just pulling aircraft in and out of an hangar. What do you want to be? Well, something more special. I thought you said just now you had no knowledge of anything special. I think that's rather lucky, sir. I can start from scratch. Start what? Anything, sir. They'll teach me, all right. Who will? Well, the teachers in the services, what they call the trainers or instructors. Well, I imagine technical knowledge is quite important, but if you're keen enough, you can learn anything. What do you want to learn? That's my difficulty, sir. Your call, sir. And perhaps a later on you could do. Good evening. That week, the notice went up. People read it with mixed feelings. I heard them discussing it. Oh, dear, I was afraid it would. Hooray, I'm going to join up. This is the end of the serious theatre. It's the end of the world. And it was the end of one world. So sorry. The end of one world and the beginning of another. Later, Fred rang up the Denham Film Studios while I was working. He said he'd something to tell me. We'd parted at the theatre, he'd wished me luck, and said that he'd hoped to see me again one day. But I hadn't expected it would be quite so soon. There was no chance to talk on the set. Yes, shh, shh, quiet. We were making a propaganda film. At the outbreak of war, actors dived into historical costumes and declaimed powerful speeches about the wooden walls of England. This was one of those films. After I'd done my beef eater speech, I was free for an hour and we went across for a cup of tea. Odd things happen in film studios. Trees blossom in October. And you'll see daffodils and iris on the tables in the restaurant. But Fred was more interested in the people. Well, I've solved my big problem anyway. Well, that's more than a lot of us can say. I mean, the problem I was talking about, sir. Don't you remember, sir? Oh, yes, yes. Well, how did you solve it? I had a talk with my girl. That's a good start. Yes. I had a talk with her, and she was in favor of the RAF. She said she'd like to tell the other girls that each time a plane passes over the shop where she's working, my friend might be in that plane. Good for her. Congratulations. So it's the RAF. Fine service. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. But it's not the RAF. Oh? I went home and had a talk with my old man. He said, my boy, I was in the Navy in the last war. I'll tell you why I went into the Navy. When a young man joins up, he joins up to fight. Now, nowhere do he get such a chance to fight as in a ship. In a ship, everybody has equal opportunities. Everybody shares the same dangers and the same luck. Captain or Stoker, the cook in the galley, or the lookout on the masthead, they're all in the same boat. But my dad said, right man my dad is, he's nearly always right. When he isn't, he never admits it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's the Navy. Well, there's a bit more to it than that, sir. Well, you haven't to say you talked to somebody else. Yes, I did, sir, with another. She said, you're not a bird and you're not a fish. If your engine stops, you crash. If your ship sunk, you're sunk too. A man's made to live on the ground. It's safer. She shouldn't have said that. 
I don't want to be safer than anybody else. I see. But what have you decided? I'm going into the fleet air arm, sir. You've got the right idea. Dear yes, sir, as promised, I'm writing to give you my news. I've been at this training establishment now since the 4th of January. Sally, that's his girl, nice girl too. You remember signing her autograph book, sir? Wrote to me that she heard that you had joined up too. I'm glad that you've chosen the fleet air arm, though, as a pilot. <laughs> Takes us off, doesn't it? We hope one day to service your aircraft. And now I come to the main point. Here you are, you see? For this, I need a beard. Oh, what? I need a beard, very badly. We're getting up a show here in three weeks' time called Grandpa's Holiday. And because of my theatrical experience, I have been chosen to play the part of the old man. For this, I need a beard. If you happen to know how I can get hold of a good beard, I shall remain yours faithfully and gratefully, Alfred Davy. I did look out an old beard, but then I forgot all about it. Three weeks later, in the course of my duties, I had to pay a visit to the station where Fred was being trained. There it is. Then I remembered the beard, folded it in an old map, and put it in the observer's seat. The kingfisher is a European bird. It dives into the water. This American kingfisher does not, we hope. Legend relates that the bird nests on the waves. Wheels are attached to this aircraft for nesting on land. I never forgot that dash beard again. In the watch office, I learned that I had half an hour to spare before my day's business started. So I nipped down to the parade ground on the chance of seeing Fred. There he is, 2,000 of him. Now he's in this group, see if you can spot him. I can't. During the march past, I learned that the ship's company concert was being held that very night. When I arrived at the show, the captain was making a speech. You belong to the finest service in the world. The Royal Navy. On you depends the efficiency of the most modern weapon in this war. There is no more important job in the service than yours. For although the pilot flies his aircraft, you make it fly. Your aircraft are the eyes through which the fleet can see further than ever before. Your aircraft form the arm by which it can strike further than ever before. And you are the physicians, the doctors of this eye and of this arm. Be proud of it and do your job. But now, for an hour or two, you can relax. Enjoy yourselves and have a good time. First item on the program will be the finals of the table tennis championship. Naval Airman Bennett representing the four top. <laughs> Naval Airman Lloyd representing the main top. I mean, sir. Hello, 
Hello, Fred. What, um, what is that you've got on? This, sir? It's my makeup, sir. Could you advise me on it? Yes, I think I could. Um, how soon do you go on? Me, sir? In about an hour. And I advise you to take it off. Take it off, sir? Yes, and put on this. Oh, sir. What a beard. What a beard. Now then, off with that stuff. Yes, sir. There you are, Fred. There you are, Fred. Oh, sir. Well, how are you getting on? Fine, sir. What are you training for? Air mechanic E, sir. E? What? Engines? Yes, sir. I don't believe it. You mean to say you are using tools? Yes, sir. That's something I'd like to see. Well, come and see us, sir. Any day in the workshop. Perhaps I will. Well, good luck. Thank you, sir. And the same to you, sir. So, you think you could fool an old man, do you? The next morning, I went down to the workshops. There were hundreds of these young chaps in overalls, working at benches, learning how to use their hands. At this stage, they received basic training in bench work and the use of tools. I walked through the shops, and after a bit, I spotted Fred. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Fred. What's that you're making? My test job, part of the final exam. They give us a blueprint, and we have to make up one of these things from it. Here, try the base on the plate, sir, and then you can see if it's level. Not too bad, is it, sir? Look at this scriber, sir. Clean as a whistle. It's all done by hand. Hammer, chisel, and file. You don't mean to say you can read this? I certainly can, sir. I've learned down. I call it a miracle. It happens every day here, sir. Four meetings, unrelated and accidental, make up the story about Alfred Davy. Now, for two years, I'd heard nothing of him. If I hadn't kept his little masterpiece, I might have forgotten all about him. This summer, my job often took me on short visits to aircraft carriers, which had returned home from active service. A walrus amphibian ferried me to my destination. now is to find a boat to take me to the aircraft carrier. Now there's a launch. It might be the right one. They seem to be waving to me. Coming. They're very impatient. Hurry up there. Yes, yes, coming. Ah, made it. But they weren't waiting for me at all. All the excitement was for a tin case. I got a glance at it. Films, eh? They told me that the tin case contained films that the ship had made during her recent trip abroad. They were just back from being developed. Half an hour later, the ship sailed on exercises. Every fighting ship speaks her own language. Listen. Hey, 
back looked familiar somehow. Hello, Governor. I mean, sir. You were in a cruiser. I was drafted nine weeks ago, sir. How do you like it here? Oh, it's all the same, sir. I had my own aircraft there, and I've got my own here. Well, how do you like the job? Who wouldn't, sir? It's the most important job in the Navy. Oh, hold on, my boy. Every job's important. Yes, but you should see it's in action. What do you mean, two weeks ago? Yes, sir. You know where we were? What a party. So I've heard. On the jump all the time. They spotted us early, we were dive bombed and then chased by submarines. Some pretty near shades too. Frighten you much? A bit. But I didn't see much of it. Well, how was that? Oh, I was in a sick bay most of the time. Oh, pity. Yes. Excuse me, sir. My aircraft wants to land on. Quite a good war job. Hey, get off those flaps! Of course, I won't be able to see her for some time, but Mum and Dad see quite a lot of her. I bought her a lovely present in Alex. I'll ring her up for you, if you like, when I get back. Would you, sir? Yeah. That'd be very kind of you. And I say, sir. What? Well, would you send the present for me, too? Well, of course. I'll come and get it from you before I go. Thank you very much, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sir, I came to fetch those things. That's all right, sir. Smells good. Irish shoe. Huh. Yeah. There will be a finish, sir. In the afternoon for the hangar, 
at 2030 tonight. It's a bracelet. Oriental. These are for Sally, too. Cute, aren't they? This is for Mum. And this is Dad's. What on earth is that? It's an Arab job. My dad likes these things. I'll take the lot if you like. Oh, I don't want to trouble you, sir. No trouble? Since your Mum and Dad see a lot of Sally? Away. Still at the same place? In the Fulham Road, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, good luck, sir. I don't suppose I'll see you again so soon. Oh, I'm going to have a look at your film tonight. Are you, sir? Where is it? In the hangar, sir. Well, perhaps I'll see you in it. Oh, no, I've forgotten. You spent most of your time in the sick bay in action, didn't you? Most of the time, sir. Right. The film was underway when I arrived at the hangar. And Tommy Woodruff, who'd taken a lot of the shots, was doing an impromptu commentary. Painting beach and Arab Jones. All right, boys, you're all in the picture, don't worry. By the way, I don't know how this film will come out quite. You see, we put it together in a hurry, just as it came back from the developers today. But anyhow, you'll be able to recognize the places, perhaps. Remember the goggle fishing? No one ever caught a fish as far as I remember. Who was that? We never got a shot of anybody catching a fish, but they seem to be after something now. But who wants to fish anyhow? Remember that afternoon we had to sail at 4 p.m. and everybody was so fed up? Well, there's the reason why. Take a good look, that's all we've got of it. Now try and get Romilly to do an enlargement for the notice board. She's a genuine blonde. Yes, and I agree. I could do with a lot more of her myself. And you should have seen the one that got away. This is where you can relax. No blondes at Mick. Ship's company picnic, but it wasn't dry. Amphibious jeep on the way back to the ship through the native quarter. Tough guy, and this is where we see the famous Casbah. Or do we? Sea fires look good, don't they? Entering harbour at Algiers. Government offices on the left. Modern town in the middle. Old town in the Casbah on the right. Ordinary Seaman Jacobs and the captain. And the French pilot. He doesn't speak English, but the captain points well in French. We're in Algiers, so now for the Casbah. Wrong again, but this is a scoop. Historic, that's what it is. These shots of General Le Gaulle are exclusive to this ship. Wardroom calling party off somewhere, and most of them in the wrong rig, except, of course, the Royal Marines. General Menton. Mech and the old fort of mosul Kabir, you remember? Well, we went ashore one afternoon with the idea of taking pictures of the fort. The leader of the party was the first lieutenant. And being the leader, he carried most of the gear. Well, when he got to the fort, he asked for leave to go in. The sentry was a bit doubtful at first, but in the end, number one just managed to squeeze in. He met the commandant and asked permission to take some pictures. The commandant said, yes, certainly you can. And he asked, is the camera in here? No, no, my commandant. You see, we were shooting with it all the time. So we got busy straight away, and so did number one. Arab recruits. Arab instructor, very fierce. Pigs. Men at work. Arab types. There must be hell out there. Hockey on the flight deck. Partnership competition in the dog watches. Beer. You all know this 
one, up spirits. And drawing his tot ten minutes before time as usual. We don't want the enemy to know we can do this. It's secret. Romilly, you're as aggressive. Romilly! Romilly! I don't know what this is. <laughs> oh, yes, it's that Casper at last. You know, where Charles Boyer and Hedy Lamar used to live. You remember that film, Algiers? Well, some of the other characters of that film never went back to Hollywood. They do you in the market, same as they do you anywhere else, particularly over eggs. Casper's supposed to be such a haunt of vice and crime, which they'd show me some. Anyway, they think so, so they put it out of bounds. But luckily, we didn't notice that until we'd finished. Out of bounds for Uncle. We were played out of the Casbah by the local band. And out of Harbour at Algiers, as usual, by the Royal Marine Band. Full ahead, all engines. Romilly's shots. Right way up this time. Dummy torpedo attack. Albacores. Coast of Africa in the distance. Albacore landing with the rock astern. Goofers gallery. Taxi forum. Ranging markets. Squirting markets. Good old Calpe going full out. Seafire takes off. Not quite enough speed. Pilots. Market lands on. And he pranks his market. He doesn't. Put your brakes on. Pranked Albacore this time. More homework for the maintenance crews. Watch it. Pops waves him on. This is a good one. Bubbles gets himself a little publicity. Met balloon for close range gunnery practice. Experimental shot of night operations. It looks as if it was taken after dinner. Next morning, arrival at Jib in Levanta. See the cloud down over that rock. It cleared later. Our old billet, the curling jetty. Hands to church on the flight deck. Church in the howl. Met balloon again. No, it isn't my aunt. It's that last attack. Now you are going to see something. Lieutenant Commander Kelly back, wants ammo. He has Vickers back. What's wrong? What's going on here? Oh, I know. Vickers got a broken air screw. Well, clear the deck and fit a new one right away. 
Here's the broken clock. Kelly's off again. And here comes that air screw. That's when we got bombed. Yes, there they go. Look out. Yeah, miss. But they shot up the deck. Sorry, that's where I dropped the camera. The doctor gets busy amongst the casualties. <coughs> Leading hands back in the job. They're still working on that air screw. Got away from the dock. Nice work. <laughs> Old Vickers gets back into it after all. All over. There she is, still there. Well, that's the lot, boys. Except for a few odds now. <laughs> You. Yes, sir. Do you know Fred Davy, air mechanic? Yes, sir. Do you know where I'd find him now? Probably be turned in, but we look for him. sleeping soundly. I've come to shake him by the hand, but when the RPO asked, shall I shake him, sir, I said, don't bother. When I'm in London, I like to take Joan for a walk. I don't know a nicer place to walk in than St. James's Park. But Joan likes watching the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. But I like watching the ducks. So we go to Buckingham Palace. people than usual. It isn't the changing of the guard. It's an investiture.
I fight a successful action to secure a good position for Joe. Next to us is a girl. Her face seems familiar. It's Sally, Fred's girl. Have you heard from Fred lately? There he is. And there he was, coming out with his parents. I went up to him, signing a book, and I said, Can I have your autograph, Fred? What's that joke, sir? No joke, Fred. It's for my young lady. Alfred Davy, Air Mechanic, E. DSM. Three years ago, he couldn't drive a nail into a wall. No good for anything. Now, his skill and courage have earned for him a decoration from the king. Well, good luck, Fred.